Hi guys and welcome to the True Golf Academy. You've joined me, John Watts, today at Drayton Park Golf Club. I'm in my swing studio and today's video is going to be about the fixed to variable ball position. What you need to know about each of these so you can work out which is the right one for you. Stay tuned to learn more about your game. So guys, we're talking about the ball position in this video. So I want to go on to the two methods the fixed ball position and the variable ball position. I'm going to start with the variable ball position. So what I've laid out here, uh, and I know it's a little bit hard from a visual from there, I've tried to get the camera as down line as possible so it's starting in this center point, is I've got eight balls in a row uh, progressively getting further away from me and they're all half a ball's width further forwards each time. So what I wanted to show with the aid of this tour stick and I've also got the orange lines on my teaching mat here is I've got a seven iron in my hand at the, cent at the minute and I'm playing that and I would play that for this variable ball position very much in the centre. Okay, And that's always in the centre of my heels, not my toes. And the reason I say center of heels rather than toes is what I do like to see with our lead heel, the one closest to the target, is it just flared out towards the target by around 35 degrees and maybe more so with a driver. What that really allows is more hip rotation, more body turn on the way through. I wouldn't play the ball any further back than the central ball position when I get into the shorter clubs unless I was trying to play a low flighted punch shot or a chip. So if I was chipping uh, around the edge of the green a bump and run or I was trying to hit a low flighted punch shot I would be moving that ball back behind my sternum. But for every other club seven iron down to lob wedge so seven eight nine pitch gap sand lob however many wedges you've got i would keep that ball in the center you may just go a little bit feet closer together when you're pitching but you still keep the ball in the center as you go longer than a seven iron so i've got a six iron a five iron four three three hybrid fairway driver the ball is gradually moving forwards and roughly by about half a ball's width at a time OK, so if I uh, this this one here is the centered one, if I go to the second or oh, two balls more forwards than that, that would effectively be my five iron. So what you can see is the ball has moved more forwards in my stance. If I move on to a driver, my feet would be a little bit wider. Let's move that line to that front golf ball now. So my feet would be wider apart. But now the ball is opposite my lead heel. So I gradually move the ball forwards from a 7-iron upwards, 6-5, etc. About round half as a rough gauge is quite a good visual for beginner golfers moving that ball position half a ball, uh, ball's width further forwards each time. The one thing I just want to mention with this, when the ball position changes, your handle position stays consistent. A less... Uh, I'm playing a bunker shot or a lob shot where I'd want my hands more level or, or possibly even feeling like they started behind the club to really encourage me to use loft and bounce. I'm trying to keep my handle position the same. So if I had this driver ball position again up near this furthest ball, my handle, if I dropped it, is going to rest on the right half of my left thigh, so my lead leg. If I went back to that seven iron again, so the central ball position, center of my heels, my lead toe is turned out. My handle position is still in the same position it was for the driver, meaning my hands are slightly more ahead. With the driver, they were more level. With the, dry, with the seven eye, my handle's a little bit more forwards. Even if I was moving into a bump and run, chip and run, which is the time and a punch shot that I would change the ball position, so I move the ball nearer my trail foot, my handle position is actually still the same. So I've effectively de-lofted the golf club a little bit more when I'm trying to hit that punch shot or that bump and run around the edge of the green. So when you do use a variable ball position, the handle position stays the same. It's the ball position that changes each time. I don't want you to play it any more back than center, uh, unless you're playing that punch shot or that chip. 
Um, so it's a good visual aid to see that that ball position is changing slightly. If you were going, in fact, let me just knock these away. If I was going for a fixed ball position, I would be playing the ball. And, and, and again, there's some slight changes here. Uh, most would say for a fixed ball position to play it from your lead armpit. Uh, some do suggest more from your cheek or your uh, lead eye, so your left eye. So it, there is some variance in here. If you played it as a consistent ball position, so let's say from your lead armpit, what you do is you alter how wide, how much you step backwards with your trail foot. So if I was going with a driver, so I've got this ball position here underneath my lead armpit, I would go a wide step, whereas with a mid iron, I'd bring my foot in a little bit. And as if I was hitting more of a pitch, I'd bring my foot in a little bit further. But the ball position is staying in a consistent position. Personally, I prefer the variable ball position. It's something I've always taught. It's some, a way I've always played the game. The advantage I can see really of the fixed ball positions, this one I'm talking about here, where it's now just your trail foot that moves, your lead foot stays where it is and the ball position stays under that lead armpit, is if you were a beginner golfer, struggling maybe with your routine, struggling to get the right ball position or questioning it all the time, it's an easier setup where you're playing the ball in the same place and you're just varying how wide that foot is. I would uh, say if, if you're not sure what's right for you, to actually give both a go and, and see how you feel you're getting on from there. If you were a real digger, so hitting much more down on your short irons, taking big divots and that was causing a problem, you would think that actually having this fixed ball position, which is more forwards than I'd normally play a short iron, could help shallow the swing. And that is true as long as it doesn't cause any real lean towards the target that I'd be worried about. So some of the, the rotational swing guys do like this fixed ball position, being more forwards, feeling like we can just rotate onto it to get a little bit more pressure into our lead heel. I see the advantages and the disadvantages of both. I see good players, I see more players playing with a, a variable ball position, but there have over the years been very good players with a fixed ball position, like a Ben Hogan, probably the most famous. Uh, I'll do a completely separate uh, video on Hogan because I think that's a really interesting subject because he sort of was changing his alignment of his body as well from open to closed as the ball position, uh, sorry, as the club changed. So he kept the fixed ball position, but actually altered it from open to closed. He was really ahead of his time, but I, I think we need to cover that in a completely separate video. It's quite an in-depth area. But just talking about ball position, remember that a, a varied ball position 7 iron to sand wedge lob wedge stays in the centre, gradually moving forwards into longer clubs. The handle of the position stays the same, whereas a fixed ball position, you play it from a fixed position under left eye or lead armpit, and it's how wide that trail foot is, and it gets wider the longer the club um, that varies. Give them a go. See how you get on. Do post some comments and questions below. I'd like to hear what you guys uh, use how you find what you think that if that uh, makes an advantage for you or a disadvantage. If you're struggling with ball position, try both. See how you get on. Um, do post some comments and questions below. If you find the, the content of these videos interesting, please do give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for all the other content coming Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Thanks, guys. We'll see you soon. Oh, <laughs>